Good afternoon and welcome to this 2021 Cancer Genomics Consortium Me Annual Meeting Vendor Presentation. Transitioning CLL fish analysis into the molecular biomarker area. My name is Jackie Chan and I am the Head of Development at Oxford Gene Technology Inc. and I will be introducing this session. This 25 minute presentation will explore how fish analysis is used as part of the standard workup for CLL patients to identify deletions of 17P, 11Q, 13Q and trisomy 12. However, sequence changes such as SMVs in TP53 and ATM are also important mechanisms of inactivation, but they are not identified by fish analysis. NGS offers us the opportunity to identify both copy number changes and SMVs with a CMV limit detection that could be in higher in NGS than in FISH. This presentation will review the results from, of a proof of concept analysis to determine the CMV LOD using the OGT SureSeq CLL plus CMV NGS analysis. Our speaker is Dr. Tracy Tucker. Dr. Tucker is a cytogeneticist and molecular geneticist at BC Cancer and a clinical associate professor in the Department of Pathology and Lab Laboratory Medicine at the University of British Columbia. She completed her PhD and postdoc fellowship in medical genetics also at the University of British Columbia. She undertook her CCMG fellowship training in clinical molecular genetics and cytogenetics at the BC Children's Hospital and Women's Health Centre. She runs the molecular genetics rotation for UBC pathology residents and has an interest in education as well as troubleshooting molecular assays for clinical application. I would like to thank the organizers and OGT for allowing me to present our lab's work on transitioning CLL fish analysis into the molecular biomarker era using the OGT NGS CLL panel. Our lab has the following disclosures. I have not received any personal compensation from OGT for this presentation. The outline of today's talk, I will cover first our current approach to CLL testing and a brief summary of the OGT CLL NGS panel content and the limit of detection. I will present results of the initial proof of concept analysis, including the CNV, SNV, and prognosis comparison of FISH and NGS, as well as the future directions that we're going to take with the OGT panel. Within the province of British Columbia, we are one of four labs that provide CLL FISH testing. We perform approximately 200 CLL fish cases per year, or about four per week. We use a two-probe set analysis, and each of our technologists count 100 nuclei each for each of the probe sets. The first probe set is a dual-color probe set that consists of 11Q and 17P, and we have a tricolor probe set that will assess for trisomy 12 and deletions of 13Q. Depending on the probe set, our current cutoffs range from 7 to 9%, which would correlate to a variant allele frequency of 3 to 5%. Our preferred specimen for fish analysis is a peripheral blood. Typically, we perform a direct harvest on the peripheral blood once it arrives in the lab, but if it arrives late in the day or after 3 p.m., we do culture it overnight. Currently within the province of British Columbia, TP53 sequencing is not routinely offered to CLL patients, which means that we're missing a proportion of patients who have a TP53 mutation without a corresponding 17P deletion, which could affect patient management. Our lab does offer a larger NGS panel for myeloid malignancies that does cover TP53, but it's not an economical option for CLL patients. Furthermore, having an NGS platform to detect sequence changes and FISH analysis to detect copy number analysis does not provide a streamlined option. By having an NGS platform that could perform both copy number and sequence analysis would allow us to unify our workflow in the lab. We also have the capability of performing the 200 FISH tests per year by an NGS as we have an automated nucleic extraction as well as liquid handlers for both our pre and post PCR. 
Because we work within a public health care system and our lab also works from a global budget, we need to assess similarly cost assays to replace our current FISH platform. The CLL NGS panel is a hybrid capture based NGS panel. It has 14 genes where you can detect SNVs or indels with a detection limit of greater than 1% VAF. There are five loci that are looked at for somatic CNV callings. Uh, as I said on our previous slide, we do not look at 6Q deletions, nor did we find any within this proof of concept. The estimated tumor content that is detected by this assay is said to be 20% or VAF of 10%. We performed a proof of concept analysis using the OGT NGS panel. We began by generating a normal reference set, which consisted of 20 DNA samples from patients who had an indication other than CLL, who had been tested and found to be normal using a different and larger targeted NGS panel and copy number analysis. This reference set was obtained over two NGS runs. We included 20 CLL patients who were previously characterized using FISH, and two samples were run in duplicate over two separate NGS runs. The peripheral blood was collected in sodium HEP for FISH and in EDTA for NGS. We ran 16 samples at a time on an aluminum mini seek using a high output flow cell. This is a summary of our results thus far. We had three patients with a 17P deletion, and the abnormal nuclei that were estimated by FISH ranged from 56 to 81%. We had five patients who had an 11Q deletion with a tumor uh, percent of abnormal nuclei by FISH ranging from 24 to 87. We had three patients with trisomy 12 and abnormal by FISH of 43 to 76%. And we had a number of patients with 13Q deletions. We had nine with only a heterozygous deletion identified by FISH and the abnormal nuclei range between 29 and 91%. One homozygous deletion that was identified at 84% and four patients who had heterozygous homozygous deletions that had an estimated abnormal nuclei ranging from 16 to 85%. When we looked at the NGS calls, the software actually provides an estimated tumor content, which is in brackets below. We had the three patients that had the 17P deletion were also identified by the NGS platform with an estimated tumor content of 56 to 70%. So very similar to the abnormal nuclei that we identified by FISH. Three of the five patients who had a 11Q deletion were identified by the NGS platform. The NGS platform missed two patients who had abnormal nuclei of 24 and 28% by FISH. Both of these cases were actually run in duplicate on two separate runs and were negative both times. All three patients with trisomy 12 were identified with an estimated tumor content of 47 to 67%. The 12 of the 14 patients who had a 13Q deletion were identified by the NGS platform. The NGS platform did miss a case with the 16% abnormal nuclei, and this had a combination of both a heterozygous and homozygous. This is considered discordant by design as it is below the stated limit of detection by the company. There was a case with 35% abnormal nuclei by FISH that was not identified by the NGS platform. The double asterisk here is indicating that we had one case of a 13Q deletion that was not called by the software, but upon visual inspection was identified. And it's shown in the slide next. This is the output for a patient who had the 13Q heterozygous deletion identified in 29% of fish nuclei. Although the software did not call this as a deletion, on visual inspection you can clearly see that the log2 ratio has shifted down below the zero, that I would be confident in calling this as a deletion in this patient.
Similarly, this is the output for two patients who had an 11Q deletion, the top one at identified in 28% of nuclei by fish and the bottom identified in 24% of nuclei by fish. In both of these cases, the NGS platform did not identify the deletion and you can see unlike the 13Q deletion, I don't see any clear shift in the log 2 ratio that would hint that there is a deletion in, this, in either of these patients. We often see patients with both heterozygous and homozygous deletions of 13Q by fish. This is one patient who we identified only a homozygous deletion by fish in 84% of nuclei. And when we look at the output from the NGS platform, we can see on the left that there is a small region that shows a heterozygous deletion or what we would suspect is a heterozygous deletion in a smaller subclone relative to the larger population with the 84% deletion that was detected by fish. And if we look at where the fish probe sits, it does not cover the RB1 locus in which is where the heterozygous deletion was identified. So the NGS platform helped us to identify a heterozygous subclone that was in this patient. It may be possible to I, distinguish patients who have homozygous or heterozygous or a combination of both the heterozygous and homozygous deletions by the NGS platform. The first patient here is the one that I showed on the previous slide. If we look at the log two ratio, the heterozygous deletion that was identified in this first patient that's shown on the left had a log two ratio of minus 0.62 where the homozygous deletion in the same patient shown on the right had a log two ratio of minus 3.9. In the middle panel in patient two who had a heterozygous deletion of 13Q identified in 70% by fish had a log two ratio of minus 0.44. In the final panel at the bottom, patient three had a heterozygous deletion identified in 38% of nuclei by fish and in 45% of nuclei, there was a homozygous deletion. And if we look at the log two ratio of this patient, they had minus 0.99. Now this is a small sample set, but it may be possible with future analyses to distinguish patients who have a heterozygous and homozygous deletion and distinguish them from patients who have either just a single heterozygous deletion or a homozygous deletion. We ran two patients in duplicate, and this is showing the output from one of those patients who had a heterozygous deletion of TP53 identified in 56% of nuclei by fish. This patient was run in duplicate in two separate NGS runs, and in both instances, the tumor content estimate by the NGS platform was 57%, which shows good correlation with the fish analysis. And this may be important as there is growing evidence to suggest that the percentage of abnormal nuclei by fish may play a role in prognosis, indicating that the tumor content that's estimated by NGS serves as a good surrogate for the fish. With this in mind, we also wanted to look at whether there was an effect of culturing the peripheral blood and the percentage of abnormal nuclei that we identified by fish versus the tumor content estimate by NGS. Looking at this graph, we have the black dots indicating specimens that were a direct preparation and the blue dots represent those that were cultured. And on the x-axis, we have the abnormal nuclei by fish and the y-axis shows the percent tumor content by NGS. And we can see that there is not a strong bias when the sample is cultured relative to the tumor estimate by NGS, which is a good indication for our lab because we have to perform both direct preparations and cultures for our specimens. So looking at the SNVs that were identified in the patients, um, we at most identified three mutations per patient. There were six patients who had no mutations identified. There were 10 patients who only had a single SNV that was identified. 
And if we break it into the number that had variants of unknown significance versus those with known functional significance, uh, there was two patients who had an ATM mutation that was considered a BUS by the lab. There were single changes identified in one patient with KRAS, two patients with TP53, one recurrent notch one mutation that was identified, two patients had frame shifts in MIB, there was one patient who had an MYD88 frame shift, and one patient with an inactivating BRCA3 mutation. Two patients had two mutations each. One of those patients had an SF3B1 mutation that was considered a VUS. One recurrent NOT1 mutation was identified in an activating SP XPO1 and one patient with a BRCA3. Three mutations were identified in two patients. There was um, a patient with three low-level ATM mutations that were considered a VUS, and the VAFs range from 1% to 2%, and the hypothesis is that this, rather than represent something that's relevant to CLL, could be an indication of CHIP in this patient. We also identified in another patient a TP53 mutation that was considered a VUS. We identified one XPO and one BRC3 mutation in one patient. We wanted to compare the prognosis that's provided by FISH to that of the NGS calls. Overall, we had nine patients who had a good prognosis by FISH who had 13 Q deletions. We had five patients who had an intermediate prognosis with either a normal FISH pattern or trisomy 12 and six patients who had a poor prognosis either from having an ATM or TP53 deletion. After performing the NGS, four of the six patients who had a poor prognosis were given a poor prognosis by the NGS panel, CMV analysis. As shown, there was two patients with ATM deletions who had abnormal nuclei of 24 and 28%, which were identified by FISH that was not identified by the NGS platform. These patients also had 13Q deletions identified by FISH and NGS and were subsequently downgraded in their prognosis because of missing the ATM deletion. So they went from having a poor prognosis by FISH to having a good prognosis by the NGS platform. We had seven patients after the NGS that had an intermediate prognosis. These included two patients who had a good prognosis by FISH by the identification of a 13Q deletion. Both of these 13Q deletions in these two patients were missed and thus looked to have a normal CNV pattern and were classified as having an intermediate prognosis. So these two patients were given a higher grade prognosis than they were by FISH. We had the nine patients that had a good prognosis were identified by CNV analysis, but again, this is not the same nine that were included by FISH analysis. If we incorporate the SNVs that were identified by sequencing, there weren't any new changes that would change the prognosis in these patients. We did identify two TP53 mutations in patients who already had a corresponding CMV within TP53, indicating that these patients were compound HETs for inactivation of TP53. So far, we have been impressed with the results that we have obtained using the CLL OGT NGS panel. There are a number of studies that we would like to perform to see if we could catch those cases that were not identified by the NGS platform. We're going to start by determining what our in-house limited detection is, and we're going to do this by performing a dilution series. Because of the complication of using peripheral blood that is both a myeloid and lymphoid fraction, we are going to obtain a peripheral blood specimen from a patient with known CNVs with CLL, and we are going to fractionate the peripheral blood into myeloid and lymphoid fractions. We'll then use the DNA extracted from the myeloid fraction 
to dilute the lymphoid fraction to determine our limit of detection. We also want to look to see if we can lower the threshold for the software to call CNVs. Obviously we want to do this without increasing our false positive rate. We'll look to verify any of our false positives that we obtain by lowering the CNV calling by digital droplet. We're also going to look at our normal reference set that we created from the 20 peripheral blood specimens to see if we can substitute any of those which could increase our detection limit for the assay and could be contributing to the false negatives that we see. So with these future directions, we hope that we would be able to increase the number of patients with known CNVs that could be detected by the NGS platform.